I'm Max Beasley, and you're listening to the 5D Podcast. This is Andrew Berkeley, and you're listening to the 5D Podcast. Hey, this is Level Up Leroy, and you're listening to the 5D Podcast. Get yourself ready for an interdimensional sensory experience. Welcome all to the dimension of sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. This is the 5D Podcast. Hello there and welcome to the 5D Podcast brought to you by Stuart and Zach from 5D-blog.com. Welcome to those of you listening live on Twitch. Also, welcome to those of you listening on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn and Stitcher. Be sure to check out the 5D-blog.com website for blog articles, competitions and news. And of course, check out the 5D YouTube channel, the details for which can be found on the 5D website. Blame, I blame that husband of yours. He gave me, he gave me his number, I promise. He gave me... Uh... <laughs> You know what? It's good. I need a little time. Isn't we had a late night last night? Which, yeah. You know, raging during the days of COVID, but we watched um, Marnie. Oh man! Uh, okay. Just, have you seen that? Uh, well, funny. I was watching um, Rear Window yesterday afternoon. Oh. How um, I'm a I'm a big Hitchcock fan. Um, and Rear Window, it's it's one of those weird films because I, I know I've watched it, but I couldn't remember how it finished. You know, it's like. Oh my god, yeah, it was him. And then I watched Psycho again. So I was having a bit of a Hitchcock thing. Funnily, should mention that yesterday. And I was going to do, what was I going to do today? Vertigo. That was going to be my later one tonight. Oh so, my you god. know. Yeah. So, Marnie. Yeah, cool. Marnie is so bizarre. And poor Tippy. I kept saying at one point, I'm like, oh my god, I feel so bad for <laughs> Tippy. Not only her character, but just as an actress. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, um, so how's it? Like, uh, I mean, there were moments where I, I thought, wow, they really are going for something here. And I just felt like she had to carry the weight of yeah. like such a bizarre, strange story. It's not one of my favorites, so I must admit, of, of Hitchcock's. I don't know why. I've never, I, I quite like it, but I've never, because I can't remember, was Connery already Bond by that point? Or... Well, that's what trying to yeah. decide because I was like he's definitely doing all his bond yeah 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 <laughs> and then he saw this and we're like oh my god he's James Bond or he was just like I'll do this between the bond <laughs> <laughs> that's weird yeah that's, that's t- so, is, is that is that the COVID sort of ritual then for your household that just watching movies and binging stuff and oh my god Xander well we have we've kind of come into this interesting ritual where you know I usually, because if I'm getting up with the girls, you know, early in the school yeah. year, I'm usually done by 9.30, 10, 10.30, <laughs> like, and Xander just can't get to sleep that early, so he'll come up later and usually go down some rabbit hole, with, you know, <laughs> the work, like his work down there or the news. Yeah. But with COVID, we've been trying to have this thing where we have a dinner with the girls that you know sort of rounds out the day yeah because during the mornings we're all sort of doing different things especially if they're all doing their school work i'm sort of distance learning and running around trying to be their teacher which oh my god i have so much respect <laughs> for the teachers um that so for spring break we just sort of were like okay everyone's gonna do the thing we have the dog which sort of keeps us on a rhythm of like we have to get the dog out uh-huh. and walk in and we try to do a group walk at some point during the day but dinner is really where we all come together okay and then xander and i are always like okay now we're gonna what are we gonna watch (laughs) because we watch the news and we just get infuriated so we have to let ourselves and xander was gifted the criterion collection okay all right decided 
we're going to do that. But to see it on the big screen, we haven't quite figured out that link. So that's why last night Marnie was on Amazon. And we were like, ooh, that's a Hitchcock we haven't seen. It is bizarre. It's, it's a weird, yeah, I've, stop, I've stopped watching, me and my wife have stopped watching the news. We have, like you guys do, we have the, the daily... Uh, government briefings, which should be what's four thirty here. So about half an hour, about five o'clock, they usually have the the briefings, which are just. It's not quite the um, entertaining ones that you have from your your guy, but I was a yeah. pretty I was a pretty poor too, you know. Um, and it's yeah. just like uh, it's so depressing, you know. So um, it is. I know. mean, I feel like when I, I I tune into Colbert, you know, to get a sense of the news yeah, through yeah. him. Yeah. But to watch Trump, I feel like, I mean, we need to know what he's saying so that we can fight it <laughs> in a way. But I also am angry that he's, it's like a, you know, he should be a child that should be sent to his room. And it's like no one is allowed to, like, he doesn't interact with anybody because what, what, he's just. Yeah. My my granddaughter's four, Aria, and she, she, she talks more sense than. Trump yeah. or Boris oh. Johnson that we've got, we're not we're not immune from these <laughs> idiots in charge. <laughs> but any, any, anyway, but yeah, my day job, I'm a, a college lecturer, so I'm working from home. Uh, so what, it's funny when you said about the respect for teachers, because now I do feel like saying to parents, look, it's not all the teachers' fault. <laughs> it's not our fault. <laughs> you deal with what you created. <laughs> It's so true. You know. I feel so humbled by the fact that, you know, my, the, even for fourth grade, like the way she, because I'm more sort of involved with her learning than my, our seventh grader. Yeah. She seems a little more self reliant. And I'm always trying, like, Xander and I have this joke, like, <laughs> anything you want us to quiz you on? You know, or like, I'll go in and try to help her with her math. But and then she'll show us a project when she's finished with it. But yeah, it's it's definitely like I got this. <laughs> grader though, fourth grader man, we're doing fractions. <laughs> yeah, <We're> doing... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So I mean, in in terms of obviously working, it's not going to be happening at the moment, is it? I guess. I mean, well, you know, well, unless you're planning and planning and writing and preparing yeah. and stuff. Well, the good news, I mean, here's what's interesting. Uh, the shift to Maine was sort of the first phase of this yeah. shift in my career. I mean, I, as far as acting goes, uh, you know, I've had, I did do, a, we did two movies this year that were independent movies. I did one with my friend, Sean Hader, down in Gloucester. Um, and then Xander and I did this one out at the farm. But... And and those were great for, you know, just from getting to tell a great story. Yeah. Um, I mean, the one that Xander and I worked on was a little more hands-on than that. We sort of re restructured the script mm. and sort of turned it into something we wanted to do out there. But it was still, uh, well, I don't know how this is going to go. It was in the hands of the guy <laughs> that, that ultimately edited and he kind of, took it over yeah. you know it was a weird sort of like oh yeah yeah let's all work on this and then he just kind of took it <laughs> and then COVID happened and then we were like oh well you know but <clears throat> excuse me um as far as that kind of storytelling I had shifted uh into some other content before leaving LA that I was really excited about and it was something that I did sort of on my own track and it was documentary work. Okay. And I'd been going out on, I think, six or seven trips now to Montana <clears throat> to the Blackfeet in uh, Blackfeet Reservation okay. to talk to them about their bison restoration because they have this amazing goal to rewild, you know, not only their land, but to bring the buffalo back yeah. to the land yeah. for everything that they use it for but also as a keystone species so that's something that i had been working on and it inspired me the the, pre, the people i was working with we were working with people in, in the tribe and um there's a thing called the ini initiative which is e and e's buffalo for in blackfeet okay and it was something that you know we saw was a much bigger story than oh yeah the buffalo will come back and and this is great uh, as a symbol and for their culture, it's just such a much more integrated 
uh, history they have, obviously, with the, and the animal mm. and, their, and, and everything that's happened to them by the hand of, you know, yeah, us yeah. coming over. I mean, it's huge. And I knew that, but I didn't know how much of the story would sort of be revealed or how much of it would transform me and speak to something that I have always felt and you know, wondered about and just in terms of the way the planet's going, yeah. so many things. Yeah. So anyway, it inspired a script and I've written that, which I'm really happy about. And now it's about maybe getting that. It would be with all black feet actors. There's maybe one or two nice. uh, non-native people in it. And I, I, that to me is very exciting. And yeah. I, that's something that I can, you know, keep working on. I'm developing a, a web series and a TV series around this Buffalo program <laughs> and as much as you know we've partnered with the WCS which is the Wildlife Conservation Society in Montana and the Bison Society the ABS and they all are very excited because it, it is bringing the storytelling not only from the native perspective but to the native people okay. and and then the platform that can come right into our houses, but also reminds them that they have to get back outside yeah. and get connected. So it, it, it all feels that sounds really cool. I mean, strangely in step, and yet we're all stuck here in, in our houses, <laughs> disconnected. So it's it's weird. It's, I mean, Zander mentioned when I talked to him last week about the <clears throat> the area that you live in now is it's going to be used as a is like a studio the plans for it to be used as a filming sort of thing is, was that kind of already in place or was it is it kind of a, just you've got you know no, no more progress that you can make for a, for a while with that because that sounds really exciting to uh, you know kind of project yes i mean that was definitely when we when we talked i mean six seven years ago about going to maine it was about what an antidote to la and to raising the kids but it was something that you know, we didn't know what the long-term plan would yeah. be. And we knew we were always going away for work anyway. You know, everything I've yeah. done, um, I've always traveled away. I mean, I strangely had three jobs in a row in LA, but sorry, I've got people texting me. Um, I, I knew that Maine would feel like our retreat and a, a place to raise the girls, but the farm had many ideas in our head. And now that we see what we could do like with this film we made, which was really creative yeah. and inspiring. But I also feel like the, the farm could be so many places of industry, if that makes sense, or a creative industry. Yeah. I feel people could come there to workshop any idea. Um, and we could maybe even help them if it was in line with sort of what we wanted to mm. do. I mean, there's 130 acres. I'm really interested in sustainability. I'm really interested in, in getting the land back to its sort of most um, purposeful, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. If, where, where it makes sense to do what it's supposed to yeah. do with them. Everybody gets back into the industry that it was, it was intended to have that's local, as opposed to, you know, let's bring this weird plant over and see if we can grow it. Mm. You know, let's see what it is for this area. And then see how you thrive by by living to that potential, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a dairy farm for many years, and then it was a chicken farm. And getting further and further away from sort of animal eating, which is not a huge goal of mine, but it's something I've naturally been doing. And I, I thought, oh my gosh, what if this was like an oat farm? We could do <laughs> oat milk here. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. But you have people come and just exchange ideas or create stories. I mean, we're all musical and creative, and we want to keep doing that. Yeah. But I had a, a, a weird crisis during my teenage and tw 20s when I was at the height of trying to figure out, like, what do I want to <laughs> do, like, creatively? And... This is going to sound strange, but the absurdity of creating something just to create it seemed uh, indulgent. I was like, well, so then I make this thing. Then what? Yeah. yeah and it yeah. just 
sits there. And unless I'm Picasso, I think I had like a meltdown going to the <laughs> Picasso Museum, and I'm like, I'm not Picasso, so fuck am I? I sit there and just go make my little thing. Because I was like a, a fine art major, and I I would get, I'd find myself in these processes of like, I finally got what I wanted to say, yeah. and then I'd look at it, and I'd be like, eh. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was I was the same. I, I, in my teens, I, I used to, I mean, I still do, I still write and I do blogs, but I used to write a little bit, quite a lot of fiction. And I once showed it to a, a friend of mine who was a, a teacher, and he looked at it and went, well, it's okay. I was like, I just went, fuck you. I just walked away, I'd ripped it up. And it took me years to realise I should be just doing it just for the hell of doing it, not because right. you know it's satisfied but i oh, i hated him he was just you know was like, how dare you i was gonna be the next stephen king and now you said i'm not <laughs> yeah well it's funny because I, I i never even got to that point of letting someone read it. right right like, that's the i thing. just went too soon with that i went too soon i, I should have waited <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because i mean of course we look to the arts especially in times like this exactly yeah yeah lift us up and join us together and to say yes i see you and yes i understand you so i understand that now yeah in my, you know late 40s but to that 20 year old like i know, you know right? was I <laughs> and i think what happened is that because i went through different iterations of like what do i want to do and ultimately experience and that's what came to acting the the experiential uh, art. Well, I was going to ask you how you got into the acting thing. So, am I right in saying I could be wrong that you're not from a kind of family acting background? It was something. Were you the first? Well, uh, was that? It, it wasn't. Yeah, they weren't in the business per se, but they were all very theatrical and musical. Mm. And in fact, it sort of clicked in. And I think it was like my second year in theater school when I thought I was just so bizarre for my family to go do this because my dad's an engineer. But my mother had been a theater major, but she didn't graduate college, just got married. Yeah. That's what they did in the South. But her father had wanted to be an actor, and his dad said no, and he was a prosecuting attorney. So he got to do his theatrics that okay. way. Right. So when I heard that, I was like, oh, so it's not like totally crazy that I want to do this. And then on my dad's side, they were a lot of musicians. And so that's where the music came in, in terms of that so i i definitely came to embrace it and see it as a part of myself that had just you know i just was a different actor than say my mother probably was her mother <laughs> extroverted and like waka 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 that yeah. kind of thing i was much more introverted and for me it was about transforming and and, yeah. and you know being shy and being able to express yourself in a different way. Uh -huh. I, try, I tried it back in school acting. Um, <clears throat> I was, apart from being terrible, that's one of the reasons I didn't continue with it. I, I did about, for about three or four months, I joined a drama club at school. Um, and I quite, I quite enjoyed it a little bit, but then I, I, I realized I could not get out of my being watched sort of thing. I'm so self-conscious, you know, and I just could not, right. I could not do it at, at all. So. But that's so interesting because I will say that is, such a natural like if you look at the arc of someone yeah. understanding acting that is always there i mean some people just burn it off quicker yeah that's the only difference so you're because saying if i'd have stuck at it maybe yeah, you could have stuck with it god damn it you could have done. god damn i i mean because what's funny though is that sometimes it creeps in in moments yeah. it depends on the personality too i think certain people just have I have a theory that honestly, people who are ultra sensitive, they are taking in the room and they're taking in the reaction people are having yeah. because yeah. they naturally, we naturally, I'm putting myself in this category, can't help it. I come in and that's my personality. <laughs> I will read the room. I'll be like, this person's bored. This person doesn't want to talk to <laughs> That person is way too happy to see me. You know, like I do all that. And it almost, cut, you know, makes it so I can't come in. Where some people just come in like, this is me, this is what I'm doing, it doesn't matter what they're doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that <laughs> that's part of it. And it's learning how to shut that out or mute it in your head or... <laughs> 
I mean, I, I, does it get easier? I mean, it's, it's, is it, you know, you're at the your stage of your career now where you've been acting a few years. I won't say how long, but, you know, a few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 it, it's interesting that you say that it's, it, that's, that kind of self-conscious is still there at times, you know, that it still okay. comes out occasionally. It's interesting. It is. You know what it is? For me, it manifests <clears throat> if someone's unhappy. Okay. Right? Like, if if someone's being uh if someone's upset on the on the on the set or they're they're behaving badly mm. or something's going on sometimes it'll come in and I'll 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 take it on as opposed to you know hope or if I can tell someone it's like I I can't let that go and just do yeah. what I need to do sometimes and that's so so how yeah, how sometimes that's needed yeah right? but that's the mother in me or something but also sometimes it's like there are people that will take care of that but it 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 bothers me sometimes and that's that's so where... how do you manage that then with with because you you've obviously worked with Xander you met him obviously in twenty four but you've worked quite a lot since then as well and you know that must be. I don't know how easy it is to work with, you know, your partner and stuff. I mean, I've heard he's a complete diva anyway on set, you know. <laughs> so that you was... You know when you talk about, like, worrying about someone <laughs> their <developer. laughs> No, no, no. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's it's definitely, I mean, you bring your marriage to it. And that, our last project <laughs> was actually hysterical because in some ways it was our marriage. Yeah, yeah. And it was yeah. like we went really deep and then it was made that really easy on some days. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, no, there's 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 a lot of joy in working with him. Um, I think what would be the hardest is to be directed by him. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it. I say no more. <laughs> he's, uh, we keep talking about it. He's like, I don't know, Sarah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so so if i do read which hopefully i don't but if i do read in a couple of years time whenever you know you know sarah and and Zandra split i'll know why because they tried to direct you <laughs> in a film <laughs> i don't know, I don't know. We, we, we laughed at our whole you know interaction as in marriage i mean we've been together almost 20 years now and you know the dynamics have shifted a lot through the years but the different roles and the way they come on i mean i i he's got three very strong women around him <laughs> and we laugh and we say yes we're strong but you know you're the king and it's like every once in a while the king <laughs> You know, has to let the court roll. <laughs> but, so, so basically, know. what you're saying is, you you let him think that he's in charge, but actually, yeah, yeah gotcha. Okay, yeah, I will see how that works. Exactly. <laughs> it's a bit like bit, it. like bit like my house as well. Huh? Yeah. Now, do you have you have daughters? Uh, well, my, I have my daughter, but she's she's way down, sort of fifty miles down the road. There. She's married. She's having. She's expecting uh, her third child, so my third grandchild. God, um, next week. That's so so nice. I know. Oh my God. I know, um, and my son, he lives just a bit further inland as well, and he's just got married. His wife is expecting a child, so, you know, we've got babies all over the place. It's so cool. So it's just me and my wife, but we've got the two cats and the two dogs at the moment, so totally outnumbered. Yes, oh my gosh, how sweet, though, that you've got them all nearby. It is cool, That's yeah, it, it it is cool, it is cool. Um, d Does it... I don't know if it bothers you or not, because I mean, obviously, you, you, I mean, I was looking at your IMDb. I don't know how many credits you think you you know that you've got. Well, you've got like sixty odd, I think, I, credits according to IMDb over the years. Um, does it annoy you in any way that people like me and so forth often will talk to you about like Twenty Four, Twilight, and probably Bosch now? You know, you, and you're probably yeah. thinking, I've done tons of other great work, you know, and you know, but it's that that people come back to. Does it bother you or not? Fine. I, I feel like... Because I've got some questions, so please don't say no. <laughs> oh, okay. well, no, no, that's the question. The funny thing is, is it, always, it always tells me something for the people... I mean, obviously, when I... The people that love Twilight, for example, mm -hmm. you know... Not, not I, me. My, my daughter I, loves Twilight. Exactly, but that's the thing. It's like, oh, that's the 
you know, it's, <laughs> I, I know the demographic. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sure. oh, my wife. <laughs> now, I love Bosch, um, but my wife was the first to get into to Bosch. Great. You know, I, I was. Oh, I was saying to Xander last week, I said, look, I was, you know, when I told my wife and my daughter that I was talking to you, and they looked him up and everything, and they went, oh, God, yeah, Xander. Then they looked about, you know, he's married, and went, oh, my God. And, and my daughter went, um, Twilight, ask her some squirt. And then my wife went, oh, my God, it's it, Bosch, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, <laughs> I'm talking to Xander. They went, no, 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 you've got to talk to Sarah as well, so... <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and my wife had said for weeks and weeks and months and said, look, you've got to watch this series on Amazon. Um, it's a cop series. Now, I love cop series, but occasionally I get a bit kind of tired by them. But she said, no, no, it's really gritty and it's great and it's got Titus in it. You know, it's just brilliant. So and then I binged it in, I think, I the first two series in about two days, you know, just oh, boom, boom, wow. boom. Yeah. <laughs> So you're right. There's this. This you must have this. This different demographic for kind of like Every, everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything. I mean, the people that know sort of my more obscure, crazy, like independent work. I'm always like, whoa, where did you see that? You know, or <laughs> if they've seen Men of a Certain Age, you know, with Ray Romano, it's like they know that it's that kind of. Uh, sorry, someone. It's okay. Um, you know they they happen to catch a, a certain phase of my career but i do wonder sometimes like the different uh different personalities put together yeah. and cuz some people will think of me only one way mm -hmm. you know and i think it was really important for me especially after say 24 because 24 was such a bizarre uh it was a cultural right. phenomenon, wasn't it? You know, it was. It was, and boom, nobody you know. knew. Nobody yeah. knew what was going on. I mean. And you were a nasty piece of work. Much. You were a nasty. Yeah. <laughs> I was given such a gift, and and part of that gift was also not knowing at certain places yeah. how how convoluted it would get. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's interesting. Once I had done all three seasons, and then I, I remember I did a big press tour in Asia. In, we went to Japan, and then we went... God, where else did we go? Anyway, in Japan. And it was the first time I could talk about it with any sense of sort of uh, through line. Because each season, they'd be like, well, so what does this mean? I mean, I don't understand. And then every year, I would go to the producers and say, so why am I? And they're like, it's this. It's this. And then by the third season, they're like, it's just you just want the money. Like, what? <laughs> and, and I remember thinking to myself, I feel like Nina right now. I feel like I was recruited into this agency and they fucked me. <laughs> was so um i guess why it really stayed with people is that i played the truth every time i knew it yeah <laughs> you know what i mean so and so I, you weren't aware cause, i mean i i talked to quite a few people i went on a few of the the facebook 24 sites that there are on twilight and to say that i'm going to be talking to sarah and blah 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 and you know have you any questions and lots of people sent questions about you know the fact you know did you find out late into the the thing then when that you were going to be the mole or that your, your character was going to be the mole yeah. so you so, were as, as just as confused as the rest of us maybe as well. I, look that i can say this and i say it with the best humility i mean they told me maybe three or four episodes before the end wow that i was the mole wow. and i they were like you can't even tell xander i was like <laughs> Alexander. <laughs> but I won't tell my parents. How about that? I won't tell my parents. But I remember uh, I was, because, I mean, up to that point, I really was getting to this, like, all I'm doing is, like, Jack, where are you? Jack, Jack. You know, it was like that. I felt like my character was sort of losing steam. So when they told me that, I was so excited. And then I was like, wait, but is that going to work? And then I realized, yeah, to be a very efficient and successful agent, you double agent, you <laughs> double have agent, to believe yeah. where you are is is your truth, and that would make you even more sort of um, 
effective. Did, did, you, did, did you have your own kind of guesses as to the the mole was when you when you did between you and the cast or yourself did you think who the hell will this be before you found out i remember never i, I what's so funny is that i thought it would never be me I, don't know <laughs> I, I i i think that is my midwest like that just shows like they were like we really picked one right out of the midwest because i mean i think when i when i when i auditioned for the show I was in New York and I was doing all these really crazy avant-garde yeah. theater. Like I was a dancer, I was an artist. So I was like, what, I gotta go work in the CIA? I'm like, I you know, barely could do email. I, it was really <laughs> one of those things where if for me, I never thought of myself being capable to think like that as a mole. So I think yeah, that's why it yeah. just never crossed my mind. Like I just was like, I'm going to do my job. I'm a worker bee. But then what's really interesting is once I was given that gift and once I really sort of explored what that meant and started to see the context of the whole landscape as it unfolded, because I was, I think as we all were, very naive to the whole CIA world. Mm -hmm. I just hadn't... Mm -hmm. Really, maybe not, but I, I certainly didn't. And I think with 9-11 everything sort of broke open about everybody's yeah. naivete yeah. about the world, right? Yeah. And so that second season, I think, was the most fun for me as far as what I got to do with the character and how I got to play both sides. I got to know the most, I think, in that second season because <clears throat> they were letting me speak different languages. They were giving me this whole backstory that they kept saying was going to come back around, which it never did, mm -hmm. but that's just because they started to see the landscape as needing to constantly change, 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 right? But I really would say that that was some of the most exciting work in the second season. And then knowing that I would be coming back, and I remember when they called me to have me come back, I said, well, I'm not going to let you bring me back so that you can torture me for eight episodes. <laughs> I said, not going to do it. And they said, no, 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 this is going to be, you know, we're going to really explore blah, 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 and all this stuff. So that was fun too, because they gave, and, and I have to give this to Kiefer, that he was willing to secede power to make me more powerful. Cool, yeah. Which... You know, is hard for a leading person, I think, at times. You know, but he, he saw the value. And I can remember just one even scene when early on in our negotiations, God, it's been so long, but it is funny that this stayed in my mind, that he had the idea that he hands me the briefcase and I we think we're done. But then he turns to do something and then I hit him with the briefcase and knock him out like, that was his idea and I remember he's like damn he's like it'd be great because then it's like I can't look away for a second and I was like that's great you know <laughs> we hadn't even written that in and then we got to go to these all of these other scenes where we're tied up so it was good yeah I mean, it, it, it definitely taught me uh uh the the value too of of power which is is a is a funny way of getting it yeah yeah but that was a big theme when i went to japan the women looked at me as this hero of like you took the power from the man and, and i was like whoa okay you know but then i was like that was kind of like a lot of sacrifices <laughs> It's a, it's a it's a slightly extreme way of taking power, but you know extreme, I suppose. Extreme, extreme. <laughs> ways you can do this, but they were definitely like really. Spent a lot of the women came up to me like I you I was devastated when you were <laughs> like oh my god okay. And then of course subsequent seasons they turned me even like they loved to like add it. They added on so many. Oh yeah, she did this. Oh that was Nina. She did. This. <laughs> And also, you, you had to keep secrets as well, because obviously, you know, the the relationship thing, you know, s started and... Yeah. You, did you keep that secret with you and Xander all the way through filming? Was that kind of... Or, or I, did people find out and you had to come clean? Or, what, 
what was it? What was it? The the. Well, season? oh, you mean our relationship? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the proper the proper stuff now. The <laughs> the real Xander thing. Xander definitely. Xander wanted to be more public about it, but I just <laughs> come from New York, and and I think the Midwesterner in me was like, oh, we just met. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I've only oh, known you a year. I can't do it. up with him after, you know, and it was just part of my shyness and wanting to have my, you know, my secrets. But um, well, m- m- then when it was, when when it came out, it was actually really fun. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, they... my wife. I mean, my similar stories. It's slightly. It's not quite as high profile as yours but my, my <laughs> wife and I met when we were both working at Pizza Hut so I know it's not quite the same as 24 Pizza Hut you know um but we had to <laughs> we have to keep a secret and we were married within five months of meeting each other so there, there you go you know oh, so you know one of those similar. things so Pizza Hut 24 it's a similar sort hey, of thing you, you know, know what? you know what Sandra and I realized once we were together that we both worked at the Magic Pan which was <laughs> a restaurant Is it hot coffee? Because when he did his Instagram thing the other day, he was drinking iced coffee, and it's like, that's the devil's drink. I'm sorry, coffee should oh, be yeah. hot, iced you coffee. know. Oh, no, don't. No, it's true. This is hot. This is a nice cup of, a cup of joe. <laughs> good, good stuff. It's really hot. It's good. You don't mind if I take a sip? You go for it. I'm drinking my... This is juice. It's not um, gin or vodka. I wish it was, but it's um, this is just yeah. juice, so there you go. No, so... Where are you now? You are in... We're in Scotland. So <clears throat> we're on the east coast of Scotland. It's about 40 miles north of Aberdeen. So if you have a look at the UK, we're pr- right up near the top. So we're, we're miles away from like Glasgow and Edinburgh. Um, I'm originally from sort of the north of England, but my family's Scots. So we moved, we've been up here for 16, 17 years now. And it's it's oh. kind of, it's a, it's a little village and it's on the coast. and. <laughs> I'll send you. I'll send Sandra a pico of it. It's it looks okay, great. We're coming to visit you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'll come to Maine. You can come here. We'll do a swap. Yeah. It's be cool. It'll be awesome. But it does. It's the similar climate because we have been. I think that was the other thing. LA never felt like my climate. Yeah. I needed to get back to my Celtic roots. <laughs> I'm Irish and English. Okay. And I just. Definitely feel more at home in a climate where I get to wear a sweater and have a <laughs> warm cup, and I'm not. You know, I, I could not. I could not imagine living anywhere where there wasn't. I mean, I, I'm not a winter person. I like the warmth, but I do like the seasons as well. You know, so I couldn't imagine anywhere where you don't know when it's winter or you know. I like I like that change, and you know, this time yeah. of, today now it's been beautiful. We've got sunshine outside, and it's. It's, it's nice, right. you know. We can't go anywhere, but you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. You know, it's now, great. what are the rules, if I can ask, in Scotland, for you guys going out? Um, well, it's, well it's, it's it's yeah, it's a complete lockdown. So, um, social distancing. We've got um, there are no shops, no uh, restaurants are closed, cinemas are closed. Um, most of our food we get delivery from the local supermarkets, but you can go and buy food, but. You you're allowed to go out for I think about half an hour a day for a jog or to keep fit or near that. Oh, wow, and they're they're looking at that. Yeah, I yeah, know. yeah, and they've had the po- the police going around certain parks and moving people on that are being flouted. It. We haven't had too many people. Kind of, we haven't had what I've seen in some areas of the states where people have been openly demonstrating, which I, I just don't understand why you would do that i don't i don't get it i don't get it i'm sorry but i just don't understand you know no 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 it's so weird and it's it's yeah it's just brainwashed that's the only thing i I don't brainwash of one some sort you know this idea that like give me covid or give me that well you're gonna get it yeah right give it to other people i know and you know we've had something like 20,000 nearly now in the UK deaths, but that's only hospital deaths. There are many more thousands 
um, outside hospitals that have, have succumbed, you know, to it. And we probably will only know in the next few years how many either were here. I mean, I know you guys have got it, you know, sort of 30, 40,000 now. So yeah. it's, uh, but it's interesting what you said earlier on about, you know, the importance of art, because I think this is one of the things that's really come across in the last few months or last few weeks is the importance of people just, you know, the the art that's an important thing in sort of books and film and you know people's time being occupied while you know we do this sort of thing because yeah you know I've caught up on on so many books and films and rediscovered certain things that you know it's 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 a it's a time when we I think when we look back we'll look back on this time as a sometimes a little bit of joy but sometimes a little bit of just confusion don't you think it's just it's very very strange. Um, in what we discovered. Um, but it, it is, you take comfort in that. And, um, I'm so sorry. I just realized something right now. I cross lies. I have a phone call right now about a short I made. And well, just like, are you coming to the Zoom? And I'm like, oh my God. Funny thing is, I have, I have now got to go myself because we were okay. slightly late because I'm expecting a food delivery, funnily oh, enough. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. So let's do this. Maybe continue part two another time, yeah? I would love it. Thank you. It's been so lovely. It's been great. Thank okay, you. you enjoy your Zoom conversation. Thank you. I totally forgot about it. Ah. It's cool. It's fine. It's cool. I'll speak soon. Lovely. Thank lovely. you, Sarah. Lovely.